GM, everyone. Welcome to this edition of This Week in Frax. I'm your host, DeFi Dave. I'm here with Capital K and Sam, as always. And this week, we have a, another very special guest that is uh, giving us a hint of how Frax ETH is proliferating throughout the ecosystem. We have Adam from stakingrewards.com. Uh, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Good to be here, guys. Yeah. So for our viewers and listeners at home that might not be familiar with stakingrewards.com, uh, what is it and what do you guys do? So Staking Rewards uh, have been around since 2017. Um, we are the market leader in staking data and research. Um, we have an API that's used by Binance, Coinbase, Bloomberg, a host of other guys. Um, and yeah, we're essentially a team of researchers. Um, we're quite uniquely positioned in that we don't have a token. We don't run nodes. Um, we're not a provider, staking provider ourselves. Um, we just, yeah, we're, we're more like an unbiased kind of voice in the industry. Um, we also host the annual staking summit, uh, each year we, the first one was last year and the next one is in Turkey in November. Oh, so it's during a uh, dev connect week. Yeah. Uh, strategically nice. after dev connect. Yeah. Strategically after that, yeah, yeah, very yeah. smart of you. So you guys provide data for all staking, staking that's happening throughout different blockchains because you guys have been around for a while since 2017. That's a long time. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, it's been a wild ride. Um, I mean, yeah, we provide 150 uh, POS assets data for. Uh, so yeah, we. Yeah, we're quite, as I mentioned, quite uniquely positioned in that we, we, we serve mm -hmm. an API. Um, we also have our website where we have a range of tools and calculators that people use to, um, yeah, uh, enhance their kind of strategy, staking strategy. Um, and Very yeah, cool. Our, our website, um, yeah, gets, gets around 200 to 300 uniques a month. So um, is, is well used by people that like to stake, let's say. If people like their fresh steak, information on their steak, make sure that's organic, you go to stakingrewards.com. Um, and so now we're curious, how are you guys working with Frax ETH and, you know, with us in Frax land over here? Yeah. So um, we're really excited to be launching an index, uh, index staking protocol. So um it's essentially going to be we're 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 labeling it all weather staking um and all weather staking yeah um, rain or like, shine and not nice, nice. uh mr dalio um but <laughs> nice. it's yeah essentially it sr eth is um an 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 index token where you can get diversify across uh rocket brax and um lido so there are kind of key strategies to start with. Um, we're taking a kind of unique, I guess, position in that we're not like gunning for the highest APY. Uh, we're not gunning for the highest yield. I feel like in, you know, in the crypto industry, there's, there's a lot of people already offering that. Um, we've identified through our website that um, all the users on there, that there is an appetite for people that would like a more stable yield not stable coin but a more consistent yield um allow them to kind of plan ahead the staking rewards market is quite volatile um so we're looking just to provide uh users an alternative that will just let them plan ahead um so yeah to go on like a, a long road trip with their ETH without having to worry about uh... reward market <laughs> fluctuations yeah, that was actually going to lead to my next question. How you guys are different from other indexes, but you pretty much answered it there. You guys are aiming for the most stable yield, but not exactly like the highest yield. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think, you know, that we have identified there is appetite for that. Um, and, you know, I think especially, you know, with institutions coming in down the line, um, I feel you know, not everyone has, everyone has a different risk appetite, right? Um, and we're just looking to provide, yeah, as you said, a more kind of stable yield. Um, and that's going to be powered by uh, those three core strategies. 
Um, but we're also going to layer um, DeFi on top of that. Um, we haven't quite um, got to the point where we're going to talk about what the, all the allocations are going to be. Um, we're probably a few week weeks away from our initial mm. launch. Um, but yeah, that that's coming soon. Oh, you, you just answered my next question again. Oh, uh, when you right. guys plan on launching? <laughs> and you're reading my mind. You know, great <laughs> minds think mind. alike. And so what do you think uh, is going to make up the allocations? Like what is your methodology for the weights and everything? Yeah, so um, we can actually... So we're actually partnered with um, a group called Spool uh, who offer a like they're kind of like a middleware for DeFi and they're um, targeting institutions. We decided to work with them because we really like their V2, which they're in, in the process of launching now. Um, they've been around for quite a while um, and they allow you to kind of, uh, yeah, it's like programmable strategies. So we, we can um, essentially give a scoring uh, based on risk to uh, different strategies and we, we can kind of, yeah, change those strategies as we kind of progress uh, and our team of researchers uh, on hand to do that. So um, you can also, you can program, you can add some programmability, but there is also, you know, I guess an element from our, from us where we can come in and, you know, change things as and when we see fit. So yeah, we'll probably have like um, a base kind of level risk programmed into the strategies. Uh, and then when we start to layer DeFi on top, um, yeah, we, we can be quite flexible with that, which is which is the beauty of working with Spool. Mm. And where can people stay up to date with when this index is going to come out? Like where can people can find staking rewards online and where can people find you? Yeah, just stakingrewards.com. Um, and yeah, we're on staking rewards on yeah all, all the regular social. That's a hell of a URL, stakingrewards.com. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it really, I think it's really benefited us uh, in the SEO game. So I think that's, that's really helped. Um, but yeah, no, you know, all your regular channels. We're at Twitter, um, website. You can come and say hi on Discord. Um, yeah, and yeah, learn more about it. You'll find SREth, um, which is our all, all weather index uh, in the menu of our website. So yeah, come and take a look, sign up, get early access. You hear that? You hear it here first, folks. Uh, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. No problem at all. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> all right, that's Adam from StakingRewards.com. Exciting to see. When these indexes come out, you know, Fraxeth is always in there. Estrax is always in there. So, you know, yeah. promising for the ecosystem. Yeah, I, I was wondering, is it a real token or is it just an index? It's, it's an index. So there's like several of these. Okay. Um, you know, we had uh, Origin on. So there's OETH. There's mm -hmm. also um, um, Unsheath, Unsheath, yeah, Unsheath, or Unsheath. Yeah. Unsheath. Um, mm -hmm, but I really mm -hmm. like their approach of, you know, we're not going to go for the highest volatile uh, APY. We're just going to try to be the most stable so people can anticipate their future. I respect that. I respect them carving their own line and being different. Well, eventually they'll put everything in Frax <laughs> Yeah, eventually. All roads lead to Frax. And without further ado, we'll get right into uh, everything that's happening uh, in the world of This Week in Frax. And I know we're all Frax Melissa here, but today I am XRP Army because <laughs> <laughs> of that court decision. And uh, that, you know, XRP is not a security. And I've been saying this for a long time. I was like, it only takes one court decision to turn everything around and it just happened sooner than people expected. Oh yeah. Like the, the whole tone of American crypto has completely changed to a 180. And now like, you know, this perfectly sets up for the next cycle. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that it's a summary judgment. It still has to go to trial, but those are strong words that came out today. Yeah. And uh, of course, the SEC can appeal, and I'm sure they will. Uh, but it is positive to see some good outcomes. Apparently, yeah. after the like the recent, the last quarter has just been like negative. Nancy Gary Gensler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, we are in the flight me stage, brain. so <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was nice to see. Really mm -hmm. nice to see. Yeah. Markets loved it as well too. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, look, XRP up almost eighty percent on the day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so 
for Frax News, though, uh, you guys had the interview with Samye this mm-hmm. week, and their Fraximal vault is topping $2 million now. So congrats to those wow. guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. big things. Congrats. Um, that was a fun interview. Uh, I know we, we covered a whole spectrum of co- topics from Fraximal vault to how they, you know, come up with strategies to cosmos. Um, and you know, like I said before in the interview, I'm really happy they are contributing and building in the Frax ecosystem. Yeah. It's really nice to see people building on top, especially for a well-needed vault like that one too. Oh yeah. And I've, like, I've had an idea for that one for so long. Um, but it's finally nice to see someone come out with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I think the interesting thing will be is like, as we add more collateral types into the Fraxland, uh, that they can expand it out as well too. So it will become more than Frax at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hop ahead, but speaking of collateral types, a uh, snapshot or a snapshot vote just went up for a, uh, idea that I had been talking about in the uh, Frax forums a couple of weeks ago. And that was to add a new market for a stake Frax ETH Steth pair, uh, where you deposit stake Frax ETH as collateral and then you're able to borrow Steth at uh, hopefully a pretty high LTV <laughs> ratio. I would expect either 95% or 98% mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the idea here is that you would use that, that extremely high LTV ratio uh, to then get pretty big leverage on your stake frax ETH and you're essentially playing the interest rate game. So the idea is Mm. that the the interest rate of stake frax ETH is always going to be above Steth. So you should borrow as much Steth as possible to like sell back into the market and get like short Steth and long frax ETH. Oh, so you you, you have to monitor and make sure that the, like the difference is, is always stake frax ETH before above Steth. Otherwise, you know, could be trouble. Exactly. And I'm sure there's a lot of Steth holders out there who would be happy earning interest on their on, yeah. their, uh, on their Steth, right? Same thing for our ETH as well, too. And I think our like once we get the Steth market, if this one passes, then we'll get an our ETH market as well, too. And like hmm. you can just start playing. I think the interest rate, inter- like the interest rate games are going to be fun because, uh, you know, if you can be long to assets and like if we go to Frax Facts, uh, it has that nice little chart, right? If you had mm-hmm. been long Frax, so the difference, sorry, the difference between uh, stake Frax ETH and our ETH over the past, what, six months or seven mm-hmm. months since January, mm-hmm. since the product launch, uh, has been 54% for our ETH. And, you know, if you can get leveraged on that, you get leveraged long uh, on your on your ETH, I think it, it's going to be pretty awesome what you can, the returns that you'll be able to make. And plus, like, the only exposure then you have is, like, ETH, different, different ETH staking products. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, additionally, we had this like blue chip rating that came out. And <laughs> uh, so blue chip is a stable coin rating platform that was funded by uh, Rune Christensen, who is the uh, founder of MakerDAO. Uh, it was founded or sorry, it was not founded, but funded by uh, Rune Christensen, who's the co-founder of MakerDAO. Uh, Reserves co-founder Nevin Freeman and Starkware co-founder Eli Ben Sanson. And uh, they have developed a rating system where uh, they have all these stable coins here. Pretty much every single stable coin in the market. And they have provided ratings for them. Some of the notable ratings are a D for Tether, a F for USDD, which is the one on Tron, uh, an A for Binance USD. And uh, those are the interesting ones. Frax, however, got a D. Uh, for two reasons. Mainly, it's the governance module that is active right now. Uh, so they say that it's uh, the core team controls the majority of the VEFX voting power. Uh, and additionally, the multi-sig has full control over the uh, platform at the moment. So uh, maybe the rating will get better once FraxGov comes along. Yeah, I... It, it's... It's always funny with these, you know, standards. Everyone tries to like come up with, you know, an unbiased standard, but it's hard to have an unbiased standard unless you get like the whole buy-in of the stablecoin community or whole buy-in of a certain community. Otherwise, it seems like, oh, like what are the interests here? Like blah blah blah. This like plays to our favor. This is against us. Because um, like, you know, obviously they haven't seen the Frax code proposal. They could have easily been like, okay, they they are working towards decentralizing and remedying this. 
um, you know, we're monitoring the situation or at least give a mention to it mm -hmm. or at least give a mention to the balance sheet. Uh, it just seems like they really haven't done their homework. And yes, like we're biased here as Frax people, but we're yeah. giving a check on them and their obvious bias there is like whoever's backing them. Yeah. So they only rated us on four of the six, uh, wait, six, yeah, six, uh, scores. They really uh, gave us an 82 on stability. Yeah, so the stability was mostly affected. Stability score was primarily affected because of the uh, USDC DPEG. So because we had two days that were outside the variability rate, and we also had a uh, large change in the price of Frax because of the USDC DPEG, gives an eighty-two. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the the primary the primary negative scores came from the governance, uh, which. Uh, they, I mean, we, we all know what's happening with governance and what the multi-sig has control over. Uh, so hopefully that will change. Like if the, if the governance score can come up to like, uh, an 80 or a 90 instead of a zero, it'll skew back and fracks will go up to like a B plus or like a B or something like that. So I think for right now it's just waiting for governance. And then after that, it will all change. Standards, man. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, also, this week we had a great post. Actually, I want to talk about this post because this one went out today. This was a guest post that was done by Kieran, who uh, came in and uh, let me pull this up. Wrote about stable coins in Nigeria, and this post was called uh, "I am Nigerian and Nigeria is my beloved homeland." I thought it was very well written. Yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah, it gave a really good picture of. You know his situation, how he got into crypto, um, gave the you know Africa viewpoint of it, which I don't think we hear about as much. Mm -hmm. um, like I was reading it, I was like, oh, like this is like really interesting. Like you know their path and like their and his path, his journey into the space um, and how he got involved and how he you know he worked to understand the ins and outs, the ups and downs of what's going on in crypto. Yeah. It's a really good story. It's quite personal. And so I would recommend everybody to go and check it out. It's definitely worth a read. It was probably the best thing that we've put on the site in a long time. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope it I hope it gets the, uh, the attention that it yeah. deserves. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so Kieran's going to be doing some writing for us and he's a great writer. So it's, it's nice to see his stuff there. Uh, we also had another guest post, uh, probably a record, two guest posts in a week. Uh, mm hmm. We, we also had a guest post from a uh, friend of the show, Stable Scarab, who talked about how Frax ETH v2 is going to balance capital efficiency with decentralization. And I actually asked Stable Scarab to come and write this after he published a thread with these nice little pictures talking about the LTV ratios of Frax versus Rocket Pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just goes to show here, like once Frax ETH 2 comes out, you'll only have to put up four ETH worth of equity to borrow 28 ETH as a loan. And so the, the LTV ratios are really good. That's 87% versus Rocket Pool, where you have to put up eight ETH and then also 2.4 ETH in RPL. And so your LTV ratios are going to be uh, much higher. And so I love, payment I love these you. guest posts. <laughs> I love getting the community of voice, you know, yes. <laughs> talk about decentralizing Flywheel a bit. Yeah. Uh, so really, really love the different perspectives. I, I think they're both great content creators and it was very nice to have yeah. them on this week. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It adds a little bit of diversity in our voice at Flywheel because we all have our styles, um, but it's always nice to mix it up a bit, or, you know, do a little switch up. So we also had a continued discussion about business development. Uh, I think a, a couple of people just brought up random projects that were either adding uh, Steth or some other things that were adding stable coins or something and Frax wasn't there and people were asking in the chat like like why isn't there a dedicated biz dev person well we do have a dedicated business biz dev person that's uh N Nader shout and out then, Nadir Nadir yeah yeah and, shout out uh, shout out also, he works very hard I don't think people will realize how hard he works in the background but m me and Kent know um yeah. you know he's he handles all the Frax BP inbound engages and governance like he is like the one, he's like the one stop shop for all that. And I can tell you his hands are definitely full. So he's not, you know, so maybe like they could probably like, you know, Frax could use some more BD, but Sam continue. Yeah. So 
uh, Sam came in or Sam Kaz essentially came in and said, yeah, like, you know, we want to build a, a platform that's like Ethereum or Bitcoin. We, we want the organic business development to come at some point, uh, you know, people work on ETH and BTC, he said, uh, without expecting compensation from the Ethereum Foundation or Satoshi. And he said, uh, in order to get Frax to that top level of a true long lasting protocol, it's important. Uh, that we have a culture where the community thinks its relationship is to the core developers. And he wants Frax to have like a true decentralized growth uh, where the fan base and the people that are uh, the community and yeah, exposed to the project are the ones pushing for uh, business development. Yeah. How do you guys feel? Uh, what is your guys' take on Frax BD? Because we definitely have a, uh, you know, firsthand perspective, or at least I do. But like we, I guess we all do because we're part of Flywheel. We get most of our, a good amount of our funding from Frax. Um, you know, what do you guys think? I I know that Lido has a pretty big BD team, mm -hmm. and uh, they pay them very well, and they work very hard. Uh, yeah. So, and you see it. I mean, Steth is everywhere, right? And, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think there's benefits of having it. Also, there's not. I think that. You know, maybe maybe it's something to try out once Fraxy V three V two is launched. But uh, yeah, I, we talked about this last time. I mean, it's hard to hire BD people because you don't know how good they are until they leave. Yeah, like my my oh, thought that's a on great this. way to put it. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's true. as a BD person, I know this firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my take on this is, I think BD is the most underrated aspects of one of the most underrated aspects of crypto and like i have to second what sam says you don't know how good they are until they're gone their value is intangible um i know there's been a lot of talk about you know kpis like oh if they reach a kpi then uh you know they should get rewarded and i think kpis you know make a good or like you know having rewards like that make a good supplement but i don't think you should rely your entire bd strategy on just you know Oh, if you, it's only like a hundred percent commission. I like, I really think that there should be like somebody on staff or like some community person, like gets a salary in the same way that make a delegates get a salary or something like that. And like, have like a clear job for them. So, you know, with Frax ETH it's simple, like your job is to get Frax ETH into as many places as possible and, uh, you know, write governance proposals, like, you know, do, do AMAs, do, you know, try to like just proliferate frax ETH everywhere as frax try to get that circulation supply up from you know 2500k to ooh, uh, a million um so and i think that like that requires like some base salary with like some bonuses i don't I, and like if people if there wants to be like kpis and stuff like fine but like i think like if you if you want to like a really good bd person like you're gonna have to like have someone Somewhere like in between, like that's like on staff, but also part of the community, um, because otherwise, I don't think that you're you're gonna get either the best person or you're, you're gonna get like someone who's like a hundred percent dedicated. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I understand, I and I agree. I mean, I think that Frax at some point should test the waters with a, like a PD program, whatever that looks like, because there's I think there's a lot of opportunities that we probably should be a part of that we, you know would be in that conversation, but, uh, we're just not there because we don't get the visibility yeah. that we, that we need. If only there's someone to go and write governance proposals and do this BD, uh, both online and in real life that has experience. I don't know who that could be. <laughs> I have no idea. Mm. Hmm. It's, I think it's a hard I, job. I, you have I, to yeah. track, you have to track all the different protocols a diff, uh, across all the different networks and then like reach out to the founders and like you know like mm. keep spreadsheets and understand what's happening in governance and stuff like like look at what's happening with ave right uh this week right uh they have voted to launch their go stable coin on the 15th of july which will be tomorrow and uh frax probably could have been in the discussions for liquidity uh, but at the beginning, it's going to be uh, a balancer pool with uh, some sort of LSD and then uh, some other type of stable. So they did ask for Frax input in the in their governance proposal. But uh, I think I was the first person to come across it. But I saw like four or five. I saw Lido's BD team in there. I saw uh, uh, Ari's BD team in there. So like 
these there's like professional people who are being paid to do this who are just like scanning the forms of these other mm -hmm. platforms like waiting to just get their proposals in right mm -hmm. uh, and it's not even about that the, the products are better it's just that you know they have it's an awareness issue and showing that's, up yeah, yeah. And, and that's why you know in part flywheel was created to increase the you know educational uh you know resources of frax to increase the awareness of frax you know outside and to make it easier for people to find frax and learn about frax and so it's like one thing you know we cover like we do marketing and education very well here at flywheel i'm very proud of the job we've done and you know we've actually you know inspired people like stable scarab to go out there and do his threads and it's like great to see mm -hmm. you know the frax you know creed proliferate throughout the ecosystem but BD is like having like that kind of it, like marketing and awareness is different than like BD. BD is more of just like on the ground work, like direct sales, yep. like, okay, like what are the like objective numbers uh, that you're trying to grow and like, what, what are you trying to do um, there? So it's like two different, two different categories, but like also kind of the same because it's soft skills. And a, a thing I want to point out is it's also not just one person, right? It doesn't have to be just one individual. It could actually be a almost a pool of funding and anybody who kind of rises up to the challenge to do BD for Frax. Let's say, you know, there are, I am in charge of Arbitrum Frax protocol related things. And mm -hmm. every single governance proposal in the Arbitrum ecosystem, I am on it, right? And th yeah. th that way, it's still, quote, unquote, decentralized. And also, you can still track it, like Dave was saying. Everybody has a KPI you know, relative to, to their ecosystem. And then it makes it much easier to track, like, you know, how's everything going? And people don't get burnt out by, by doing mm -hmm. this BD. And it's also you don't concentrate too much power into one individual who do all your BD for you. Cause when they leave, that's when you really know how well yeah. they were. Right. Exactly. So exactly. decentralizing maybe... it this way with like a fund and then like every two weeks or every week, like, you know, that funding goes out to folks who actually perform the work and yeah. you just need Nadir to be like the, the fund manager just to allocate the, the budget accordingly. And he sees like, Oh, okay. This person did this much BD. That person did this much BD. Here you go. Here you go. I think something like that would work. Yeah, I agree. And you can have like different people on different parts of the funnel. So you have like people, you know, scouting for those op opportunities, like, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, like truffle sniffers. And then, yeah. you have, yes. <laughs> and then you have, you know, those that are good at writing the proposals or reaching out or talking to devs. So like go in and like do that first initial reach out. And then you can have other people that are, you know, and then at some point you have to like pass it on to the team. Um, if right, it gets right. to that point. Um, but yeah, this is definitely, you know, something that could be, I think all of us can be like improved on because, you know, we want to see Frax everywhere. Um, the core team can only do so much. There's only eight of them. We can only do so much at Flywheel. Mm -hmm. We're focused on like marketing and, and education. So there's definitely like an opportunity there with the BD. It's just like a matter of, you know, how that program is implemented. I could talk about this all day, but let's continue yeah, to see. the next thing. <laughs> uh, so if you are interested, a uh, awesome community member has made a Frax FXS price ticker. <laughs> Let's go. It has a little rocket that points up or down depending on the price, the 24 hour oh, price, that's funny. if the 24 hour price is up or down. And so uh, you can actually come in and make a bid for this and get it sent to you. It'll take the top 10 winning bids. That's pretty funny. That's Hope awesome. it has an alarm <laughs> that, that <laughs> yeah. rings that like certain price alerts. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. in the next version. Okay, so uh, what else happened here? So uh, Resonate, who uh, was on a little while ago, has done a Twitter Spaces, which we've linked in the documents. It was called Region Radio. Uh, Frax was on there, and uh, this happened a couple of days ago. This was on uh, July 7th of last week so friday right after we published this um oh hey iq wiki did some awesome coverage of nice Gov. yep yeah our friends yeah so good friends some, good always friend. with the good always with the good memes Oi, good <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oi. 
Uh, they have done a very nice Twitter thread about how FraxGov works. Um, and yeah, so go check it out. That'll be in the docs. But they, they link our video though. Are oh, they really friends? <laughs> <laughs> Did they we'll, link our we'll video? Ask them to add it. Yeah. No, 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 but we can ask them to add it. That's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then lastly, we have mean finance has some mean finance. Yeah. So mean finance announced that they can, that you can now use Frax to invest into your favorite assets on Arbitrum. So mean finance is a state of the art DCA protocol, a DCA protocol. Yeah. Nice. State of the so, art. Yeah. So it's kind of like the, the T app that we have or TWAM, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so you can sell, you can you, on, uh, you can essentially sell your Frax for something else and it will dollar cost average you in and you choose like whether you want it daily or weekly and then it executes it for you. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, kind of funny that um, somebody's like one of Frax's feature is a whole protocol for another project. Yeah, <laughs> Frax is a fractal of DeFi. I'm beating that drum until we re rename Frax Chain Fractal officially. Uh, so uh, the Frax Die Gelato Pool that we've talked a lot about mm. had three votes, actually got passed with a twenty percent fee. So, oh, it did? Yes, Rage Quit is now active. It was posted in the chat. You can go pull your money out if you want. Grills, you fork right now. Fork. <laughs> Shout out Grills. Uh, I respect it. I mean, like. You know, he, he's playing the governance game right, you know. Mm -hmm, and, like, yeah. this is something that obviously a lot of people care about because they want their funds. Mm -hmm. So so here's an interesting one. We have two new votes for Arbitrum Fraxland AMOs. Ooh. Uh, we have a pretty vanilla one for wrapped Bitcoin against Frax. It's going to add 5 million, yeah, 5 million Frax that can be lent out in the AMO. But additionally... There's also going to be a GMX Frax Ooh. AMO. Very cool. That will have 2 mm -hmm. million Frax to start. What mm -hmm. if there's a GLP Frax one? That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be a good Things one. that you could build with I it. I think that would be a much better one. Yeah. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's I the, the thing... like, stable coin, basically. Yeah. I think that the... isn't the thing with GLP just like the pricing? It's just like I mean, index. if it has a chain like Oracle, like. I guess because you know. wasn't Umami's like thing in the beginning is that they're going to like track the GLP price and then like do some stuff with it, but they couldn't effectively uh, like track the price. I don't, I don't, I like, I'm not fully up to date mm -hmm. on that one, but I think GLP is a little bit harder than GMAX, which is just like a governance token. Yeah, I, it, yeah I, maybe, but who knows? Maybe there's been some improvements since last year in the oracle feed of that and then there is also a frax ferry deployment for stake frax ETH to phantom mm -hmm. Hopefully <laughs> going to phantom going to phantom so good luck on back. that <laughs> and, uh... yes. Yo, I, I love how we were just chilling in the multi-chain hack because frax ferry exists and it was just yeah. like oh we're good we're not affected <laughs> this is why we built Frax Ferry. <laughs> so you in-house uh, so, the most important infra. Oh, yeah. So actually, I wanted to talk about the BD stuff. So um, like the Avi thing, like I added a, a a proposal to add like a Go Frax base pool uh, to the Frax gauge controller. Um, but there's even there's questions about that. Should it be Frax, just Frax, and just Go? Or should it be Frax base pool and, and Go? Um, well, how they play the how. game. Exactly. Do, will they co-incentivize? Yeah. Um, and, they have to. Yeah. Well, and then we, lastly, we've got a... We had BD. <laughs> I'll just hit up my friends at uh, Ave, see if they would be down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then lastly, the Samier team has uh, proposed adding a Fraximal Vault token to the Frax shares gauge controller so essentially you'll be able to add extra yield you'll be able to like lock oh. up your lock your frax in their vault which then gets optimized into frax land and then earn fractures on top of it for the lock liquidity that mm -hmm. you're providing them 
Hmm. Oh, that's right. The liquidity is lockable. That's right. I remember. Yeah. That's cool. That's interesting. This is a first of its kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is there any other like single staking options that have gone to the controller yet? I don't think so. Hmm. This is cool, actually. Uh, Do you think this will pass? I think so. Yields are high enough already. I I think it probably needs to prove it a little more, in my opinion, because showing already 18% sticker price will be like, we know. Why? Yeah, but that goes away. I mean, that, that only lasts for a couple of weeks, right? So remember from the discussion that we had, the SOM rewards will essentially taper off at some point and uh, the yield will just be there. So this is just another strategy for them to maintain their TVL um, by getting locked liquidity, essentially swapping out the SOM token for frac shares. That's why I think it, it needs to be a little bit later. And I think Frax, we want to see that pool a little bit larger before actually allocating FXS gauge rewards towards it. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Uh, maybe if the SOM team started like buying Frax shares or like CVX FXS, maybe it would uh, have a better Yeah, see? That's, mm-hmm. Yeah. That could be interesting. That could, like, yeah, take yeah, all of your SOM emissions that you allocated to the Fraximal and just mark it by FXS with that and then VE FXS that and then you put a gauge up and then you vote on it. Okay. Could be interesting. <laughs> could be yeah. interesting. Wait, does, does did somebody say they have any uh, VLCVX or anything? I don't think so. I don't recall. Okay. Yeah. Well, if they do, you should go buy some Frax. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's going to wrap it up here. Um, you know, you know what, what, what I've been most interested in is like, I, I don't think we've, it wasn't really any direct news about Frax, but like the Pendle hype has been like high uh, uh, yeah. recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we should have them on as guests to come talk about, uh, the stake Frax ETH yields and stuff. I'm down. I'm open yeah, to yeah. it. Maybe I'll meet them at, uh, in Paris yeah. coming up. Paris. <laughs> yes. Yeah, awesome. I'll be there. So if you're there, hit me up. All right. You Dave, you want to sign hat? us out? Yeah. Send yes. If you want to catch us every week here at Flywheel, This Week in Frax, Flywheel Main Pod, Frax Check, everything in between, make sure you hit that bell button, subscribe, leave us a like, give us a comment, let us know what you think, love us or hate us. We want to know. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do that, at Flywheel DeFi. Join the discussion on Telegram, at Flywheel DeFi. You can follow me on Twitter at DeFi Day 22. You can follow me at 0x capital underscore K. And I'm at traders underscore inside. And we will see you next week. Peace. Peace.